Hello and welcome to Xinhua Live. I'm Yu Yue with Xinhua News Agency. I'm now in German northern city of Hanover. The 2090 Hanover Mesa is ongoing now. The world's largest industry fair opened yesterday and it started since 1947. With a history of over 70 years, this year's exhibition attracted a total of 65 hundred exhibitors from 75 countries and areas all over the world. With the leading theme of in integrated industry, industrial intelligence, it shows the latest development in the artificial intelligence and 5G networking. And today I will just show you some of the highlights of the AI technology. And now we come to the ICW Eurodrive company and they are just showing a smart factory now. Let's come closer to have a look. And uh, hi, we have Mr. Ao, the CMO of the SEW2 with us. And uh, Mr. Ao, would you like to further explain to us uh, how is this smart factory working out? Yeah. So first of all, uh, thank you for visiting our booth. Uh, what, what we do today is a showcase of uh, new manufacturing technology, especially in uh, moving to electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles. Uh, this is a real life example of what we do in our own factories, but also what we do with customers uh, like uh, Ego, but also Geely and others. And what's unique here is uh, all systems you see are smart movers. So that means uh, you have uh, logistics supply, you have material supply, you have a carrier for the whole vehicles and these vehicles organize themselves. They organize themselves based on an uh, AI algorithm, on a self-learning uh, method, on identify what's the shortest way to travel, how to cooperate with uh, humans, but also how to interact with other uh, 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 manipulators, uh, and as you see, what's uh, specific and uh, unique to all this component, we communicate via wireless, but also we communicate via light. And uh, we have some uh, different uh, colors uh, communicating with the workers, green, red, blue, yellow. But we also have invisible light. Uh, you see the little uh, white shining uh, LEDs communication between uh, cars, vehicles, assistants, and they organize themselves. As you saw one minute ago, uh, the handling system communicates with the car. Now the car will move on to the manipulator, and uh, they interact, they optimize, and what it really means for the customer is we improve productivity every day, every hour, every minute, just by finding the best algorithms on how to set up manufacturing and how to organize the flow within the company. Okay, so how does the workers and the machines, they communicate with each other? I noticed that workers have also yeah. wear a smartphone. Yeah. How does they yeah, work yeah, between yeah, each yeah, other? Yeah. First, there are some uh, standard codes used. Uh, with, uh, with uh, vision and light and also with uh, gesture. So that means uh, the, the worker can snap a car and the car will come. He will wave to a car. He can stop a car by putting his hand up. So he can use just his gesture to communicate uh, with uh, the vehicles and with the manipulators. Or we are using, you may see it over there, the woman in red uh, with the glasses. Uh, we, we use uh, the Microsoft HoloLens or other uh, uh, visuals uh, to communicate with the car. And then again, you, you see the communication from the, from the robot or from the uh, uh, assistant. And you also can manipulate by moving your gesture, by, by uh, snapping a tool. And uh, that's how you interact between the human, the worker, and uh, uh, and the manipulator. So uh, by this means that the efficiency of the working system improved quite a lot in the practice? Yes, so the efficiency improves. So first it's really the whole factory planning, the, the shop floor for planning, 
uh, as you see, uh, there is a certain uh, layout. But most important is every day the workers learn something new and the robots learn something new and they all, every individual is a high power uh, computer calculator connected with the cloud and within the cloud we run an AI algorithm, a self-learning algorithm to find out how to optimize movement, how to op optimize uh, time and uh, how to improve every day. And we established a, a similar uh, system in our factory in Graben Neudorf, where we over the last uh, 24 months we drove 30% productivity improvement without adding any additional machines, robots or, or assistance. So I noticed that the ladies in the last stop, uh, she wears a HoloLens. Yeah. So what does the HoloLens tell her about? Okay. I saw uh, there's also a screen there. Yeah. So yeah. what's yeah. the connection yeah. between yeah. the car yeah. and the lady? Yeah. So the HoloLens first give a, a visual impression, but it's also acting like an X-ray module. So the woman can actually look through, through the car and see the the quality of the manufacturing system of the car so she can look inside the car without even opening a door she can look inside the battery package she can check the whole installation the assembly of the car and that's really what she's doing so she's doing the visual inspection of color of paint of mounting but she's also having a x-ray function uh, within the uh, the hollow lens to look through the car to confirm quality and finally that's what she did now she confirmed quality of this car and that's now why the car is moving to the next station okay there is also a live overview in the screen that we can show the whole procedure of the plant that yeah. everything is under control right yes so that's really the visual of the system and this is now the real-time operation you can look at the screen you see also the uh, the cars moving but even more important, you can do the full plan simulation on the screen without running the factory. So what you do is you start with the simulation, then you put it in real life operation, and then you are running the self-learning algorithm, uh, algorithm, I call it the, the, the simple learner, uh, to improve uh, the process, show it again on the screen, and then have either a other algorithm or a, a human person confirming, okay, now let's change the setup and we will go with the new system. And that's, uh, that's something we do already since many years. Uh, we do simulation, installation and operation since many, many years at car manufacturers. What's unique is now it's all with a digital twin. It's all, all data in the cloud and we have this artificial intelligence improving operations every every hour okay so after seeing the factory of nowadays we can try to find something for the future and i noticed that there are some virtual reality practice and we can go somewhere else and uh, i know that you have been to china for several times so does china also a big market for SEW? yes china is a is a huge market for SEW. Uh, SEW uh, turnover is 3.2 billion euro and 25% of our business is in China and uh, the, the share of our business is continued to increase so I think within the next two to three years I assume that 30%, 33% of our business we will do in China. We also do hefty in investments in China. We have a major plant in uh, Tenjin. We do uh, operations and assembly in uh, Suzhou. Uh, we have a nice factory in Xi'an. And uh, not only do we run factories, we also have uh, service centers and, uh, and uh, customer support in approximately 38, 40 locations in China. As we know in China, uh, you need to be local. China is a huge country, so we need to cover the whole area from uh, Shenzhen to, to, to Harbin, as well as uh, Chengdu uh, to Shanghai. And that's what we are doing. 
Okay, so now we see there is a virtual reality and a screen. So what is this about? Yeah. So uh, on the screen we showed you a simulation. Now you can be part of the simulation uh, by uh, using the lens. And then you can really be part of the assembly plant. I think you can pull on the... the okay, I see. What I see is the same and, on the screen. Now you can really move inside the, the manufacturing site and you can really walk through the plan. Uh, you can visit your plan and uh, visit your shop floor and I think uh, just follow the instruction. Uh, you can be really become part of the manufacturing. Now you clicked on the manufacturing floor as you see uh, and you can really be part of the manufacturing floor look at the current, opti uh, uh, current operations, but you can also online uh, change the setup. So you can change the setup, you can change the infrastructure, you can change the layout and uh, run a full plan uh, simulation before really implementing it in the real plant. Okay, it's really cool. Thank you for introduction, thank you. Okay, if you just join us, we are now live broadcast from the 2019 uh, Hanover Massa, the largest uh, industry fair. And now we are going to another booth and to try to find out if there are something more interesting in the AI technology. The Hanover Massa is the world's largest industry fair. It was started in 1947. 1937 and it has a history of seven years and uh, this year it attracts more than um, 6,500 exhibitors from 75 countries and areas all over the world. Well, you can see there are a lot of visitors here and uh, they are watching at a uh, cute fish here. Uh, let's go over here. But watch carefully, this is not a <laughs> this is not a real fish, it's actually a bionic fish. And what is this bionic fish made of? Let's invite the robotics engineer to give us a further explanation. Hi, Mart. Hi, would you like to give us a brief introduction of the bionic fish? What is it made of? Yes, so what you see here is the bionic fin wave. And it's uh, completely 3D printed. It has um, two fins, both um, on one on each side, and it uses for propulsion. And actually, it can uh, control the direction where it goes, like a like a tank, by moving one to the front, one to the back. It can rotate both to the front. It can move forwards, um, and it can go up and down by bending the complete body. Okay. So, uh, where is the sensors? Where? Yeah. So we have um, sensors in the head. You can see there are five uh, ultrasonic sensors to measure distance to the top, to the bottom, to left and right, and to the front. And with those sensors, it can actually swim inside these uh, tubes you see there. Um, so we can have a look in the tube. Look over there. Where is the cute fish in the tube? Oh, so here, here. here you see uh, one of them in the tube. And, uh, so it can swim naturally like a real fish? You know, it can swim naturally like a real fish and uh, because it doesn't have like normal propulsion system with a screw, it cannot get stuck in plants or something. So it is uh, much better if the, the water is um, polluted with stuff in there. So the example. function is changing the tube in the, some dangerous situation? Yeah, or uh, just discovering or looking what is going on in the, into the tube, yes. So that could be one function, yeah. Okay, it's yeah. really inspired by nature, right? It's really inspired by nature, yes. I also noticed that there are something more in the booth, and we can notice that there is, there are some soft arms and soft hands, and maybe we just move on to have a yes, look. So we brought some other displays. One of them is the hand is here. I am. Can you just go over here? Okay. Oh, here it is. So this is a completely pneumatic hand on uh, our soft robot. It's also pneumatic. And for example, you can give it a hand. Just go in there okay. and put it on. And it will close. Okay. So you okay. can try, yes. Oops. Right, just put it on. 
Yeah. Oh. yeah, so it uses uh, pneumatic fingers um, that are really flexible, so they don't break easily and they have a lot of power. For example, you can, uh, with this hand, you can carry up to 12 kilos. The robot cannot do it, but the hand uh, could, uh, is able to do this. Yeah. Can wave hands? Yes, we can also, also let it wave. Just tell it uh, to start waving and uh, have a little bit. <laughs> Hello. So you can see all the degrees of freedom of the fingers. Each finger has two degrees of freedom, so it can move the top and at the bottom. So I can show you some of our other displays. Okay. If you want, we can go like this. Yeah, what you see here is uh, the same hand that is actually uh, has learned how to rotate the object using artificial intelligence and it's now in the training phase still trying to learn to rotate it um, um, we can go further to the <coughs> to the other objects so yes this is one pneumatic robot that is um, using uh, an actor based with textile to, to move around, so it's really soft. You can always uh, push it to the side. And this is very safe if you work together with uh, humans. And this is actually one of the predecessors, the, one of the parents of the other robots we show here. So and the safety is increased? In the safety is increased, yes. And one other advantage is that this, the, the weight that itself has is low, lower than a conventional robot, and that means that you can carry a higher weight in the end. And here you see the same concept, but uh, a bit newer, combined with uh, rotary drives as well. So, how such a drive works, you can look here. So we have uh, bellows on this side and on this side, and if one of them extends, you can move to one side and to the other side. And you can make the whole system stiff by <laughs> applying pressure to both sides directly, and then it's really stiff, so it's really strong. So if I come closer, will it stop or slow down the speed? Uh, no, in this case not, uh, because we don't have any sensors to detect that. But um, you can always push it to the side. So it's, you, you should think of it as like a colleague. If he is... Uh, to close you can also push it to the side and then afterwards it will just continue with this uh, move. So by the edge? So, yeah, you can just uh, always push it and then... Uh, so the workers and the machines can work much better in this way? Yes, it's quite because easy. the robot is soft. It's not hard like a traditional robot that has gearbox and stuff. It's, it's soft. It's more like a human would be, like a person would be. Yes. So quite intelligent and a cooperative working system. Yes, so you, you can really work together yeah, with the robot. And you don't have to be afraid. Okay, so okay, so you have, don't have to be afraid of the robot itself. It's quite popular here. Everybody shakes hands with them. Yeah. Yes, they really like it. The feeling is also really nice. So, yeah. So, you, yeah. so in the end you have the cobot. It's more like a traditional robot where they are uh, all uh, linear drives, or, so, or all rotate, rotating drives, um, and they are, um, it's a model of the human arm, so it has about the same uh, degrees of freedom a human arm has, um, and this robot is actually also coming onto the market, so because this, all these projects are in the research phase, where they um, we just show what is possible, you could think about it like concept cars in the car industry, and uh, yeah, so this, but one of the some of the products also come to onto the market, but that's not our main goal. Okay. So the FASCO has also a lot of uh, branches and development in China. I know that you also participate in some exhibition in China, like the World Robot Fair yes. in Beijing. Yeah. So we are in first in, in China as well, but we also have a. Technology Center in uh, Shanghai, and there are a lot of people working there with, uh, as well. Yeah. Thank you so much for your introduction. Thank yes, thank you as well.
Okay, after seeing them, watching some soft robot, we are looking for some more funny robots somewhere else. And actually, I have heard some music. Let's go and find out where they are and what they are doing. If you are just joining us, we are now live broadcast from the 2019 Hanover Messe in Germany. It is the largest industry fair, which has a history of over 70 years. And now we come to somewhere else. The Hanover Messe is showing the latest development of technology for industry use. Including 5G network, artificial intelligence, and light-weighted manufacturing. This year, it attracts 6,500 exhibitors from 75 countries and areas all over the world. The leading theme is integrated industry, industry intelligence, and it shows the potential of the digital. Networking development between humans and machines in the age of artificial intelligence. And now we are going to another booth of Highway, and you can see there are also a lot of visitors here. And what they are watching at? Well, there are some cool, funny robots there. There are some robots dancing and playing with the music. We are we are watching as some dancing robots that work much like robots, that they are dancing to the music, and they are working very similar, like the people. And you can see the music. The reason is just、uh, with their actions, and the robots can move back and forth on a seventh axis. This extends the range of the motion of a robot. The robot can be very interesting, and with the music, it's quite vivid, and、uh, it's quite popular, a quite popular exhibition in the、uh, industrial warfare. Okay, now it's time to warm up. If you like our report, please share it with your friends on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And we will bring you more latest news from the Hanover Massa, the world's largest industrial fair. And please follow us, following the Xinhua. And thank you for watching. See you next time.